Voices from the past can provide considerable help and insight for dealing with the present. And some of the most powerful and profound voices from the past are found in the Bible. And one of those voices is the Jewish prophet Isaiah. And he lived at a time of change and uncertainty. And Isaiah tried to bring perspective, direction, and hope to the perplexing time in which he lived. Perhaps that's why many of his words are still commonplace today. Perhaps this is why we continue to look to the book of Isaiah for insight and wisdom. Particularly around Christmas time, <clears throat> we often hear some of the phrases that come from Isaiah's lips. My guess is that even if your familiarity with the Bible is limited, uh, you've heard some of these words from the book of Isaiah before. Do any of these quotes sound familiar? Uh, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and we'll call him Emmanuel from Isaiah chapter 7. Or how about this one? For to us a child is born, uh, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The voice of Isaiah is still speaking. (laughs) But what is he saying? And how does this ancient voice help us discover and define our faith for a new era? Well, these are the questions we want to consider in season two of our Faith for a New Era series. uh, As we use the ancient book of Isaiah as a case study of what it looks like to use scripture aided by tradition, reason, and experience to inform our faith. Today, we'll begin by exploring the background of this biblical book. Now, books of the Bible are named uh, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, For example, uh, the book of Genesis takes its name from the fact that in Latin, Genesis means beginnings or origins, and the book of Genesis is all about beginnings. Um, The book of Psalms gets its name uh, because Psalms or poems uh, is what the book consists of. Uh, The Gospel of Luke is titled Luke uh, because the book is written by a man identified as Luke. And the book of Isaiah is called Isaiah because it contains the words, the ideas, and the teachings of an 8th century Jewish prophet named Isaiah. It was a confusing time in Judah. In many ways, it was not unlike the present moment we are living in. Into this situation, Isaiah speaks, bringing direction, clarity, and perspective. He brings a word from God which was the role of the Old Testament prophet. Isaiah sees the world changing around him. He sees the old systems and structures that had served the Jewish people so well beginning to collapse. He sees people losing faith. He sees that what had worked was no longer working. And he tries to bring a word from God that will help people embrace the new reality they were facing with clarity, direction, and hope. Because people are always facing change, uncertainty, and crisis. And in those times, we need a word from God that will bring us direction clarity, and hope. So Isaiah brings a word. He brings a message. Actually, he brings many words and many messages. And if you were to summarize everything Isaiah said, you might do so around three major themes, the first of which is purpose. 
The world is not a random place and life is not by chance. There's a bigger purpose going on and that purpose is found in God. Isaiah reminds the people of Judah that there's always God. There's always a force outside of themselves that they must take into account. They're not on their own. Uh, They don't live an independent existence. Life is not purely self-determined. There's something above, beyond, outside of and through them that must be considered and contended with in order to make proper sense of life. There is purpose in life and the universe. Secondly, principles. There are principles or universal truths by which the universe works. Life is found in aligning with these truths or principles, which are not merely restrictive, but are often prescriptive. Uh, These universal principles are not just about what you shouldn't do, but they're also about what you can and should do to enjoy a meaningful and fulfilling life. Now, it's easy to forget these principles or to neglect or misunderstand them. But one finds fulfillment in embracing them, while at the same time recognizing that our understanding of these principles is often and necessarily evolving and changing. Thirdly, Isaiah brings a message of hope. There's always hope. There's always a reason to be optimistic. God is on our side. Life is never hopeless. Mistakes can be fixed. New approaches can be figured out. Failure is never fatal. And the trajectory of life in the universe is good. Life is not getting worse and worse. It's getting better and better. And even momentary setbacks can be seen as being woven into the grand and good design of a good God for the world. Purpose, principles, hope. Three pretty important concepts that have consistently guided people through uncertain times. These realities have brought clarity to confusion and direction to uncertainty in the midst of ever-changing historical and cultural realities. Which is why, undoubtedly, the book of Isaiah continues to be read and studied in the present day. These ideas, when rightly understood and embraced, they, they provide a bright beacon to guide people to navigable harbors. That's how the book of Isaiah has been used and how the book of Isaiah invites itself to be used by us today. By the time we get to Jesus and the New Testament, what book from the Old Testament is Jesus always quoting? (laughs) You guessed it, Isaiah. And what teachings from the Old Testament are New Testament writers regularly using to explain Jesus' life and teaching? You guessed it again, Isaiah. The book of Isaiah is used so much by Jesus and the other New Testament writers that it has often been called the fifth gospel. Even though it's found in the Old Testament, the book is used so much in the New Testament that it has often been informally granted gospel status. So here in this ancient book, You have a word from God through the ancient prophet Isaiah to people living in Judah in the late 8th and early 7th centuries BCE. But also in this book, you have examples of how people living during the Babylonian exile and after the return from exile use the teachings of Isaiah to give them direction and hope. And then in the New Testament, you have Jesus and other writers of his day showing how the words of this prophet who lived over 700 years before them 
were still guiding and helping them in the first century Roman world. Maybe there really is something to what this guy named Isaiah said. For the almost 2,000 years since Jesus, and almost 3,000 years since Isaiah, these ancient words have been guiding and helping people in all kinds of confusing and chaotic situations. And they can still guide us today if we'll give them an honest, authentic, and fair hearing. Voices from the past can have profound influence on the present. 